<laughs> it's a drizzly morning at the National Zoo, but here at the Sea Lion Exhibit, it's not too early to play. At heart, I'm a fluid dynamicist. I'm interested in how animals interact with the water or air around them to generate forces. Mechanical engineer Megan Leftwich and her team have set up their cameras and settled in for a stakeout, waiting and watching for a passing sea lion to do what they call the clap. It'll take its arms out on its sides and clap them into its belly. And when it does that, it grabs all the water between the two and pushes the water towards its feet, and that makes it go in the other direction. With support from the National Science Foundation, Leftwich and her students are using motion capture techniques to record data on the sea lion's unique style of swimming. So what we do is we use two cameras at 90 degree angle to each other, and then we calibrate those cameras to each other. So we know a pixel 452 on one is pixel 229 on the other. Fish and marine mammals swim by swishing their tails. Sea lions do it with their arms. Those front flippers might look like fins, but anatomically, they're more like hands. That was really what I, got me thinking, like, ooh, that's a really different way to generate thrust underwater. And so it was really that differentness about sea lions that made me think, let's look more deeply into that. Is that a paradigm that, you know, as an engineer, we could build into future underwater vehicles? Today, most state-of-the-art underwater drones rely on rear propulsion to move around. But imagine one that would swim like a sea lion. The idea is that if we understand this different type of propulsion, perhaps we could build that into a capability for unmanned underwater vehicles. And to really do that, we need to understand the physics that underpins that type of motion. Back in the lab, they use software tools to crunch through all the imagery and generate an accurate 3D model of a flipper. So this product is a scaled up version of what you're printing right now? They 3D print test articles, starting with rudimentary cross sections, and eventually working up to something that looks like the real thing. They test them in a wind tunnel to evaluate their aerodynamic properties. They use talcum powder mixed with oil to visualize the flow of air over the leading and trailing edges. And a stream of air goes over the flipper and we can actually measure what lift and drag the object is producing. They also test silicone flippers in a water flume. What we do is we take this 3D printed uh, skeleton. It's meant to mimic the, the wrist and then the elbow and uh, joints on a sea lion. And we mount this into a mold, pour silicone in, and come up with the finished flipper. The silicone flipper is 65% the size of a real one. I oscillate them back and forth, and I see what the wake is behind the flipper. They use dye to visualize how the water moves in swirls and eddies. Another technique uses a laser and glass beads. And I'm going to be able to tell the kind of propulsion and the kind of thrust that's produced through this method of swimming. Leftwich stresses that she and her team are working on basic research. Any underwater vehicles built based on these principles will be the work of other engineers further down the road and probably won't look much like a sea lion. The idea is not to replicate the sea lion. It's to understand the sea lion and be inspired by that, by the physics that make the sea lion work. Looking to nature for engineering insights building a better understanding of how these most agile of swimmers move. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.